The way I see it, there are three types of retail investors in the stock market. The first type is the fund investor. This type invests into things like index funds, mutual funds, and ETFs, basically large baskets of stocks. This is the category that I fall under, and this is what Warren Buffett recommends everyone do. It's basically the proven formula for building wealth. Then we have the second type of investor, the stock picker. This type of investor isn't satisfied with the stock market's average 10% annual return. They perform various types of analysis to try to invest in stocks that outperform the market. Ninety percent of the time, they aren't actually able to beat the market, but they usually still make good returns as long as they're investing in high-quality companies. But with these good methods of investing, you might be wondering why a third type of retail investor even exists. Like the first two methods of investing are basically guaranteed to make you a millionaire if you invest on a consistent basis over a long time horizon. Well, to quote Ty Lopez, who's actually very poorly quoting Warren Buffett, you don't want to be the richest person in the graveyard. Some people don't have the patience to wait until they're retired to become a millionaire, and this is why the third type of retail investor exists. Introducing the degenerate gambler. This investor prefers to put their savings, retirement fund, and sometimes even their home equity into a handful of risky option bets in the hopes that they will make life-changing money from clicking a few buttons on their screen. But of course, more often than not, they end up just losing their life savings. So with stocks recently entering a bear market causing all of our investments to be in the red, to help us get through this difficult time, I thought it'd be a good idea to to take a trip down memory lane by visiting the home of degenerate stock gambling, Wall Street Bets, where the most horrific losses by retail investors in the stock market are documented for our own entertainment. But before getting into our entertainment for the night, please drop a like on the video for the algorithm, and I also wanted to drop a shameless Instagram plug because I just started a new account and would love to connect with you all on there. Wall Street Bets is a Reddit community that is 12.3 million degenerate strong. PE ratios, earnings per share, market share, cash flow, Wall Street Bets doesn't know anything about that. They have their own set of investing vocabulary. Tendies to the moon, we like the stock. Talk. These are the fundamentals that matter to them. These days, the subreddit is a bit less active than it was back in 2020 and 2021 when the meme stock era was at its peak. Nowadays, there are only around 30,000 or so people that are active on the subreddit. Or as they say, there are only 30,000 buying FDs, aka buying out of the money options expiring within a week, aka possibly the easiest way to wipe out your entire investment portfolio in a few trades. And I thought it'd be entertaining to filter Wall Street bets to find the all time most upvoted posts about losing money. And this way, we can all feel much better about our own recent losses in the stock market, knowing that someone else out there is losing way more money than we could possibly ever imagine. Starting with the all-time most upvoted loss in Wall Street Bets history, a $10 million loss on GameStop. And what's especially bad about this loss is that it happened in a single day down $10 million in one day. I mean, they still have $13 million remaining in their GameStop position, so it's not like they just lost all of their money. But I think it's still insane to be essentially gambling with life-changing money. But the reason this person was still holding the bag on GameStop was because he felt he was part of a very important mission. Because if you're not aware, or if you need a little refresher, this was during the whole GameStop saga, where retail investors went to war against hedge funds. Essentially what happened was, Wall Street Bets identified stocks like GameStop that were being heavily shorted by hedge funds like Melvin Capital and made a plan to pull off something called a short squeeze. What the retail investors did was rally everyone up to buy GameStop all at once because that would drive up the stock price and force the hedge funds to have to cover their short positions by buying back the stock at a higher price, which would then drive up the stock price further and further, resulting in massive losses for hedge funds like Melvin Capital. And the retail investors pulled it off. Check out what happened to the price of GameStop. It went from $2 to over $300, which is absolutely crazy. But it wasn't an easy ride for the retail investors because, as you can imagine, the price of GameStop was incredibly volatile. Many small investors that had gotten in early on GameStop made hundreds, thousands, or even millions of dollars, which left them really conflicted with what to do. Because on one hand, if they were to sell their position, they would walk away with life-changing money. But on the other hand, that would also mean abandoning their plan of sticking it to the hedge funds, because selling would of course drive down the share price, which would be letting the hedge funds win. So the reason this post got 144,000 upvotes is because it was motivation for everyone. The creator of this post was saying, I'm down $10 million and I'm still not selling. So if I can hold when I'm down millions of dollars, then you can hold too. But honestly, they probably should have just sold because GameStop has gone down a ton since then, but I thought it would be interesting to work out how much money this person would have today if they never sold. So, if they never sold, 
their $13,078,000 would now be worth $8,233,036. So honestly, not too shabby. Overall, it was a pretty exciting time. Some retail investors made millions of dollars and some very rich people were not so happy. I lost a billion dollars. <laughs> now I only have $1 billion left. And if you're wondering what happened to hedge funds like Melvin Capital, why well, looked it up. And as of recently, they're doing just fine. Now this one is actually impressive. Losing 100% of your account, down $148,174. That means that they must have bought options at a cost that matched the exact remaining balance they had in their account. And judging by the massive spikes on this graph and the fact that they literally went down to $0, I knew with certainty that this loss must have been because of options. And I managed to track down what positions the creator of this post took to achieve $0. And yeah, it was in fact, options. Specifically, it was spy puts, which means that they were betting on the S&P 500 going down in price. But this post was created two years ago in 2020, at a time when the Fed lowered interest rates and went on a buying spree, injecting stimulus into the economy. So let's see what actually happened to the stock market at the time this person was betting on the market going down. It not only recovered, but continued to hit record highs. So I think OP summed it up perfectly. Don't fight the money printer. Also, apparently at some point he worked his way up to about $665,000. I have no idea if drawing lines on a Robinhood graph is even close to being accurate, but OP confirmed it was at least $450,000. But if there's any consolation for this guy, when he posted this, he still hadn't claimed his free stock from Robinhood. So I'm sure that $5 share of Ford stock was just what he needed to soften the blow. Although he probably would have been better off by cashing in on six free stocks from Weeble that are guaranteed to be worth at least $34 by using the link in my description. Up next, we have another GameStop loss, except this person apparently used the money from a second mortgage and YOLO'd that into GameStop. Starting with $35,000, they worked their way up to $5.3 million and then back down to $360,000. And what's interesting about this post is that it seems like most people were actually encouraging them to sell. Like usually everyone on Wall Street bets, especially during the GameStop short squeeze, would destroy anyone that was thinking about selling. But here, it looks like they actually wanted the poster to do the financially responsible thing and get out with profits. Which financial responsibility and Wall Street bets, those are two things I never imagined saying in the same sentence. Seriously though, if the creator of this post just sold when his account was at $5 million and invested that money into the S&P 500, they would be able to withdraw 4% from their $5 million portfolio every year and never ever run out of money, whilst also keeping up with inflation. That's $200,000 a year. They would be set for life. But apparently, this person cared more about the mission of screwing over the hedge funds. I did find out that apparently this person did sell enough to pay off their mortgage, which is something at least. And I clicked on their username and was able to find a post they made five months ago, saying they are back over a million. So I'm glad things worked out for them in the end. But let's switch things up, because all of the ones so far have been from the last two years. This one goes way back. It might not look as cool because it's not a stock graph showing millions of dollars in losses, but bear with me because this is probably the best case study you'll see on when not to sell a stock. This guy sold a thousand shares of Amazon at $6. To put how bad of a decision selling Amazon at this price was into perspective, here's a graph of Amazon. This person sold right here. This was during the dot-com crash in 2001, where overvalued tech stocks got demolished and Amazon stock went from being worth $113 a share to being worth just $5.51 a share. And since this person sold their shares at $6, they quite literally sold at the worst possible time. What's absolutely crazy to think about is that if they had held their shares until today, their 1,000 shares today would be worth $2,191,200. Instead, they walked away with just $6,000. But I I thought this comment was very true. If you sold at $6, you probably would have sold at $20 or $100 or $500. You just never know how far something will go. And that is just straight facts. It's so unlikely that anyone would ever make it from $6,000 to over $2 million without selling. It's like the time I threw $500 into Dogecoin buying at an average price of one cent. If I had sold my Doge when it peaked at 74 cents, I would have walked away with $37,000. But of course, I didn't sell it at 74 cents. I sold it at practically the same price I bought it for and made only $24 in profit. And there's absolutely no way I would have made it to 74 cents before selling. If I 
didn't sell it one cent, I would have 100% sold it two cents to get out at two times my initial investment. But on the bright side, at least he got to claim his losses on his taxes. And now 20 years later, he's a millionaire, just not with Amazon. 450K to zero at 19 years old. Okay, so my first thoughts, how did a 19 year old have 450K to begin with? Like I'm pretty sure this kid might be Bia his in disguise. Losing that amount of money at this age is genuinely a shame because having 450K at such a young age puts you in a great financial position. Because when you're young, you have decades for your investments to compound, as long as you invest into something smart like index funds. But instead, they dropped down to 100K on CCIV calls, and then blew the rest of it on weekly and monthly ARC calls. And ARC, if you weren't aware, is Kathy Wood's fund, which has, surprise, surprise, performed terribly since the start of this year. Can anyone guess when I discovered options trading? You know what? I think I might be able to. And this is just a stab in the dark, but I think right about here. These little spikes here are when they discovered options trading, and seeing their portfolio jump in value in such a small period of time must have got them hooked. I'm guessing that after making double digit returns in a week with options, there was just no way they could go back to regular investing, where you're lucky to make the same double digit returns in a year. This spike right here, that's when the balance went up a few thousand dollars, and I bet that's when they got the idea that if they kept doing what they're doing, they could turn that $45,000 into hundreds of thousands of dollars. So they put their entire portfolio into AMD. AMD, Tesla, Facebook, Apple, and FedEx options and pretty much lost it all. And if you're wondering how this one turned out, well, OP commented saying that they're starting a new account from 2021 and would update us later on how they're doing. And I'm really rooting for OP. I mean, after losing $45,000 on options, I think that they probably learned their lesson now. You don't get rich quick with investing, most of the time at least. So I think that OP decided to invest responsibly going forward. And since 2021 was an amazing year for the stock market with the S&P 500 returning over 26%, I think they must have done pretty well. Well, I did some digging and found their most recent post on Wall Street Bets and... $71,482 in capital losses in 2021. All right, well, I hope you feel great about your own investments now. But in all seriousness, although it is really entertaining to take a look at these insane losses, and although most of the people posting their losses seem to be in good spirits, at the same time, it must genuinely suck to lose such drastic amounts of money, especially considering that most of these people are gambling with the majority of their net worth. If you have, let's say $20,000, it can be so tempting to try and trade options and turn your $20,000 into something much greater. Because you think to yourself, since $20,000 doesn't change my life, I might as well just risk it in the pursuit of making enough money to never have to work a job again. But I promise you, if you're making risky option plays, even if you get lucky a few times in a row, all that will do will give you a full sense of confidence. And 99% of the time, eventually you're going to lose. So stick to investing into things like index funds that have a history of actually building well. You might consider index funds a little boring when you compare it to trading options on GameStop or AMC, but I don't think it's boring because it's essentially a cheat code to becoming rich as long as you just invest consistently for long enough and don't sell. And remember to get your six free stocks from Weeble using the link in my description. Leave a like, subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.